Alright oh, guys, well, I'm hoping it's working. I'm looking at the live feed over there. I have no idea. I'm going to wait for it to catch up. Hey, look at there. I can never really get this stream thing right. So let me tell you, I've been editing video for the last 10 hours. And the last 10 hours, I've literally got nothing but corrupt video over and over and over. And I'm so frustrated, I decided, you know what, we're just going to do a live feed. I could not wait to show off David's build. Now, last week, I had to take like a week off. I had to. I was forced to. And during that time, I was actually kind of bored, out of my mind bored. But I created a roadmap of where I wanted my setup to be. And when I thought it would get there, well, I got there way before I don't even know what the hell. Einstein must have uh, shit my Cheerios or something because I just kicked butt and got my new drive set up way further than I wanted it to be. Now, just skipped everything, didn't I? So anyway, last week, I didn't get, I couldn't answer emails, phone calls, nothing. I had really high blood pressure, real high, and I had to... Uh, Take some time off, really. Just take some time away. And so I could not, I spent maybe 20 hours on David's build. And right now, I spent 10 hours trying to edit and show you guys this thing before I show you the new software and what it's going to do. I want to show you. Let's see if we can. Uh, I thought I had it open. And I did not. No, I, I had all this ready earlier. So we're going to take a look at David's build. And if you remember, this is the one with all the fans in it. And it's sick. I mean, it's sick. I went ahead and just did a capture from the projects I was doing. Um, let me go ahead. I'm trying to uh, make sure that everything's working. I've got my sound turned off. You guys always tell me that... Uh, Sounds not working or anything, something like that. So I did a capture from uh, Premiere, and I'm going to go back to Hit Film Pro. I never had a problem with Hit Film Pro. So here's David's machine. Now, when David contacted me, it was a really long email, and it was extremely technical. I honestly thought he was um, just messing with me, and so uh, I shot him emails back and forth, and uh, I can tell by about the third email he was pretty sincere. So this machine is actually going into a Rec Room Masters extensions pedestal. Just like that one over there. I don't know how he's going to fit it in there, but I can tell you this, it's damn sure going to power it. So what we're, we started with a Landlie. Yeah, a Landlie uh, Dynamic 011 case. The case came in, it looked like it had plenty of room, tons of room. And it did for the components that are there. But whenever you add, let's just let this play for a minute. So what we're looking at is an AMD Ryzen 7 3800X, 32 gigs, uh, 3600 megahertz memory, which is very expensive. You've got a no, you got a 360 mil Corsair closed water loop, which connected to the motherboard's RGB controller. That is the MSI um, Ace Mag Ace Pro motherboard, another expensive X570 motherboard, and what you'll notice here is the the mirrored RGB animation. It's actually pretty cool. Now connected to the board, you've got a an RTX 2070, and he's got two Gen 4 NVMe one terabyte drives. Now you can grab one terabyte drives for like a hundred bucks. Look up Gen Four drives. So I mean, just the two drives alone there. If I'm not mistaken, six hundred bucks just for the NVMe drives. He's got two. He's got one eight terabyte drive for his arcade. One three terabyte drive for his uh, Steam games. He's got six RGB. I do believe those are. Um, 2400 RPM or 3000 RPM RGB fans with a small little 80 mil 
in the back. Now there were supposed to be two 80 mils in the back. He's got, uh, let's go ahead and fast forward just a little bit. That's what it ended up looking like. And this is a, sort of like a rough cut because if you look in the back, you can see all the cables. I don't want to see a cable from anywhere. And while the machine only took maybe a couple hours to put together, it took maybe five hours just to do the cable management. And I didn't think it was going to look up to par. And by the end of the day, let's take a look at how it actually turned out. So back is very clean. He's got a 1,000 watt full modular power supply. And you can see it's clean as can be. You can see all the cables are away from the, the back of the I.O. So you can't see any cables. This thing turned out crazy nice. Now let's put, let's be for real, crazy expensive too. But um, he, seriously, he knew what he was getting into. He planned this thing uh, probably more than anyone I've ever seen plan a machine. And he knew what he was doing anyway. So here's the thing, guys. I've been working on um, this drive setup and making it as easy as possible for you, as well as um, simplifying the setup process. I get the same emails every single day. Um, Mame's running slow. How do I turn on HLSL? How do I turn on bezels? Um, how do I turn on bilinear filtering? Right? This is slowing Mame down. How do I switch emulators? Well, over the last four to six months, I've just been knocking this stuff out. And I want to show you where I'm at today, and I'm very proud of it. Hell, I even shocked myself that I couldn't wait to do a video and tear this down, you know, um, piece by piece. But um, I wasted so much time today trying to edit the damn video. Now I'm falling behind on emails, and I'm just doing everything I can to get this out because I want you guys to see it. And there's a hidden part to it as well that I can't wait to show off, but I'm going to have Tracy or um, Buddy Money Michigan test this, um, as well as some other things. But for right now, let's just take a look. So I've always talked about how simple everything is and how dynamic it is. There's nothing static anywhere. I don't depend upon a fixed uh, controller layout. That's stupid. Um, you're asking for trouble. I don't use key mappers. Um, however, I spent about four hours on the phone with Eric, remember the guy with the two PS4 controllers, um, setting up Joy to Key for his new Xbox One controllers, which finally got worked out. So let's just go ahead and run the drive setup. You don't have to run it as administrator. It's gonna, it's going to, um, it's gonna, uh, sorry, I'm looking at text. It's going to, um, self-escalate so it's going to bump itself up to administrator anyway now the first thing we notice is we do um, stop calling me i'm going to go ahead and cut this off real quick give me a second guys so the first thing it does it does a full scan of your hardware. So is, if we take a look here, it's detected. Max Plus One controller. It doesn't have to be on. It just has to be installed at some point. It's detected. Well, I've got an IPEC under here. And uh, I did have a tank stick controller, but I gave it to somebody uh, since uh, I don't have a tank stick. And I just wanted to check out the new controller. But you can see it detected the Ultimark controllers. Now, it, it looks for the mini. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you in a minute, Mike. A mini as a matter of fact, you're going to actually like this video. So it looks for an Ultimark Mini. It doesn't look for it. It detects and properly shows you the Mini, the IPAC 2, the IO, the Ultimate IO, the 4, even the older uh, PS2, which is harder to enumerate uh, by. It's a different method. So um, that's one thing I had to get over because my... Uh, program kept crashing looking for the old PS2 type controllers but anyway so if we take a look here it's detected the Ultimark now if I click the controller it tells me that 
sometimes the XRK tank sticks are detected as a raw input controller. So basically, depending on the version of the tank stick that you have, it uh, may show up as a raw input controller, basically a keyboard. And you can force that configuration by hitting yes. And if you want to switch it back, you just click no. We also noticed that it found a Bluetooth. And now what that means is since we have a Bluetooth, it set aside the Bluetooth drivers and it's going to prompt us, do we want to install PS4 and configure the PS4 controllers for us? As you see, we have a machine score. Now this is letting you know that I've created several matrices. So basically what I'm looking for is memory, OS type, graphics card, um, system resources, um, CPU, hard drive type, whether if there's an SSD available. It goes down a, a long list of things that can play, that do play a factor in your best gameplay and performance. And it creates a score. Now, I simplify that score by showing you A, B, and C. Now, once that is calculated, right now, so since I have an A+, plus, it's went through and it's optimized RetroArch. Um, sorry, I had a long list. I should have wrote this down. RetroArch, main, mess, um, Dolphin, Redream, uh, CMU, it tries. Um, actually, I nulled out CMU last night because I was having some problems with it. But it goes down about 11 emulators and it sets all of those to um, 3000K rendering if possible and 4K if possible. It also looks at your resolution to set the bezel type, screen type, bilinear type. Um, and just a ton. Yes, they do, Bailey, but it all depends on what you want to do. Wait a second. So if I go ahead and hit, I moved this around last night. We can see what exactly was detected. We can parse that, and you can just get a little detail of. So we see we have the, um, the wireless controller. The M2070 is... Um, actually don't know what the M27 is, but I've got a list in the back that, I mean, it looks at for known devices that we're looking for. However, there is a global database that you can access. It's in the tools, direct, it's in the tools, sys files, database folder, and it's the most up-to-date hardware list of all hardware. So if I find something that may be a controller, if it says joystick, if it says controller, but it doesn't match current ID, it's going to parse that database to look and see what type of controller it is. We can, um, if you run into an issue, you can um, go ahead and take a screen capture and it'll send it right to me. If you click save, it'll email it. Um, you can set your scan line options. So if I want my glass overlay, we see we have the glass overlay. Now, um, depending upon your score, this may or not be available to you. For example, if you score a C or C minus, this option will not be available to you because there is a really good chance you're going to want to turn everything up and it's going to just run at a null, I mean, just at a really bad five to six frames per second. You can set, there's actually a whole bunch more. It just parses looking for um, a bunch of, um, sorry, a bunch of uh, bezels that I uh, insert into a certain directory and then add it to the X amount and it uh, will add it to this automatically. Get the point where I'm going with this? Because it downloads this from the website. And so when I add it to my website, add it to the XML, this will grab it and add it. Maybe like content. So if you want to enable HLSL, I mean, it's doing it in real time. But I don't want to do that right now. 
So if you want to, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up a drive. By the way, you can import your Launchbox, your uh, LED Blinky, your Redream. I did have XPatter, but no one uses XPatter anymore. Um, now I'm going to show you that this is in real time. So let's go ahead and see if I have it. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you what I have available. And uh, a lot of you are going to be actually pretty happy about that. Save my device. Now, there we go. So now if we go back and run it again. And it, it will also disable Windows Defender. It will try to disable Norton if it's available. Um, and if you don't know how that's done, check GitHub. There's some of the best version engineers and hackers on that site that are hidden way down deep. And these guys are so freaking creative and so talented. It's, it's unreal. But uh, basically, it will disable Defender. That's just so none of the content gets deleted. But it does do a live check. Every single runtime it does a live check before it gets installed if it does not exist and see where you can see our bluetooth adapter is not detected now it looks like i need to recompile this and move that that label over but we still got a plus ready um so a windows defender has a really good habit of deleting some of the uh innovator runtimes so each step of the way it does a check if it's not there it's going to disable or see if it can disable your AV and or set an exclusion then go grab that module that installer from the website and it updates and installs live we're just going to click install that's it guys <laughs> literally that's it so if, I have not tested this on a live drive we're doing this now I've tested it on a million times on uh, Visual Studio and uh, software I mean on a virtual machine so, um, Bailey, depending on um, how you like to play the Wii, you can always set up the Wii U, I mean the Wii, to use a 360, Xbox One, anything you want. But consider that the Wii had an accelerometer. Um, you had just about every type of movement possible. And you're trying to set up an emulated um, profile based on your analog sticks. And even though if you set your analog sticks, you still have access movements and accelerometer. So I don't think there's any way that you could properly and uh, set the 360 controller to have an enjoyable experience. However, with a simple, you know, ten dollar controller, a five dollar Wii mote. We can go and let me let this finish. You can go into Dolphin and pair your Wii mode up. And whenever it's paired, I do have Rocket Launcher to search and uh, sync Wii modes if they're there. You're going to have Dolphin to ask you if you want to sync, but you have to physically pair that controller first. There's, I mean, that can't be preset for you. Uh, Bluetooth is a very insecure protocol, but it is a. Uh, a hardware dependent protocol so basically each device has its own id this is the only thing i do not automate for you is the game loader and currently um, i do install uh, arch game loader to your uh, app data folder however every single use of um, all games loader is using portable mode and i'm in the process of actually porting every single thing away from Techno Parrot, Nesca X, and uh, Type X. If there's a PC port for it, you can guarantee that it's much it's gonna be much more compatible. That's it. We're done. I need to fix that right there. Now if you want to load hyperspin on exit on Windows Startup, just click it. Same here. Launch box. 
interior settings. There's actually a whole lot more behind here. That's just what I wanted to show you for now because I'm so happy to finally get uh, this part of it done. There's a whole content section. You see this section here is blank. It's because uh, there's certain uh, mini forms that are being hidden because I don't fully know how to implement those between here. Um, just here in the cloud service, put it that way. So that's it. So we can hop into our hyperspan on Launchbox, whatever you want. Um, I also have Tracy, you might want to give me a call now. Well, actually, I have some. Um, we're going to talk about machines. I forgot. I've got like four support emails that I have to get to. That's why I wanted to do this live. I've been working on this all day long. But let's go ahead and talk about machines. So you remember that god awful obnoxious machine that I thought would be a really good idea, the NWIN 309 LED case. So basically it had an LED display on the front of the case. It looks really great in concept. may actually be good if it worked, but I could never get the software to um, access the controller, the front of the display board. I could never um, get it even to access uh, any memory segment, any software. So it only would just loop through one, so um, one animation. Even though one animation is even cool, it's not $300 cool. So what I ended up doing, since I had really good hardware in, in that machine, I went ahead and put that hardware aside. Let's just... Uh, and I ordered the new Silverstone because I like Silverstone. Silverstone is a really good quality case. And it's not too often they make a full full size ATX case or a mid ATX case. They always make the little tiny ones. Scott, I know you're thinking that. And um, I have one customer. I think, I don't know how many machines you've got, Scott, two or three. But every time he just gets littler and littler and littler. And my hands get more and more cut up because you're going to spend a lot of time with the cable management and um, you're going to spend a whole lot of time bandaging your, your fingers. So when Silverstone came out with this case, I said, you know what? That is a great replacement for this guy. So this is the original NWIN 309 and that's all it would do. It would do the squares. And I got, I had five people that wanted this machine prior to me doing this video. All five emailed me and said, wait a second, that's way too obnoxious. And I agree, it is way too obnoxious. So let's take a look at the Silverstone red line. Now this red line is, both of these machines I'm about to show you are literally at cost. I built them just because I wanted to build them. And uh, if something new and fresh comes out, I will build it. So we've got the red lines, the Silverstone red line. What is it? It's, oh, the box is covered up with the other box. But the it's a full metal case, tempered glass side. It's got a metal vent on both sides and top. I mean, and bottom. The front has got. Let's see. There we go. You can get. It's a red accents on the case with a red LED. Can I go back? No. It's an ASUS um, Predator uh, X570 motherboard. There's nothing cheap about this machine. Um, that is a ASUS, brand new by the way, ASUS Strix uh, GTX 1080. Now, people ask me, why not go with the 1080 over the RTX? When it comes to value versus uh, performance, are you going to spend uh, six, seven hundred bucks on a uh, twenty seventy for three hundred and fifty dollars or three hundred and twenty-five dollars, depending on where you go and what um, you know resources you have? You can catch a that's one of the best GTX ten eighties, the best overclockable GTX ten eighty, and it's RGB. And I do believe I got that card for three forty nine. Uh, from B&H. 
and that's still on Amazon is $800 card. But when it comes to price versus performance, for the average user, that's all you ever need. Until, I mean, ray tracing becomes a real thing, then, you know, then we'll probably migrate. But until then, that card holds its value and holds performance. We've got uh, 16 gigs. It, in this picture, it has 32 gigs, but it's an overkill. 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory. It's got a closed loop, uh, 240 mil water cooler. The water cooler is RGB. So is the AIO with the pump, the memory, and the video card. They're all memory accessible. You've got a Gen, Gen 4 NVMe 500 gig uh, NVMe SSD with Windows 10. Uh, you've got a 8 terabyte drive for already set up for the arcade. And you've got a 3 terabyte drive for your Steam games. Now, depending on, um, it's a little skewed. Right now, I think I'm at like 1500 on this machine. Um, it's because I bought, oh, it's got an AMD um, Ryzen 5 3600. And I'm pretty sure it's right. I have to pull it maybe a little less. Let's take a look at the next one though. Because I did not skimp on that one. I was considering taking this one and replacing this i7-7700. But um, I don't even use this machine for anything but massive storage and development. So the next one is pretty much, this is a budget just um, let me explain to you. I probably get three emails a day for build quotes. I mean, yeah, for build quotes. At least one of those is someone uh, on a really extreme budget or thinks that I just pump out, I may be able to give them a $400 machine. I've always charged the same thing since 2013. Hardware price, hardware price plus 450. And it may sound like a lot, but consider taxes, consider warranty, support. It's not really a whole lot. It's enough to keep me busy. And uh, yeah, so um, I have a lot of hardware. I have access to a lot of hardware over the years. I've got and maintained really good relationships with sales reps. And I get phone calls a lot with deals basically saying hey come back over here when they they all know i shop around for every deal to get the lowest price but i have to give the same speech every single day um, i don't do cheap machines i don't do cookie cutter machines i don't um, use used hardware i won't ship anything that is just underperforming underwhelming and undervalued it's not fair to you and it wouldn't allow me to sleep at night knowing that that machine could crap on you, it crap out on you at any moment, and I have to maintain your warranty. So I provide the best machine I can possibly provide for the money, which is always above any off the shelf machine. But I can't do it for. I mean, I have people ask me all the time. Um, I mean, all the time. Can you do a machine for six hundred? And while I understand arcades are really expensive, and you know, if you're, I tell you about half my customers come and you know, they just found out about arcades last week. They jumped into a rec room master's cabinet or whatever. And now they, they say, uh, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? <laughs> they got a cabinet and it's gutted. So I was able to put together, where is, do I even have a video of it? I do, I do. I've worked on this damn video all day, guys. It's ridiculous how, um. Now, um, look at all these. Those are all legitimate copies, by the way. Every single one of these. I bought every single one. I didn't buy Photoshop. So, um, but every, everything else, yeah. And it's a wreck. All right, so let's take, I, yeah, this is it. So here's the, I'm going to cut this down. Here's the, that? that's the Silverstone. It's got an 850 watt gold power supply. That one's fully modular. Now, if we hop over to, there's the Strix. Now, 
I'm going to let it just, because it's, it's jumping like 10 seconds. There we go. So I had all the hardware laying around. I did not have a case. And I wanted to check out these fans here. Um, yeah, Mike, I, um, I'm sorry. I, I, uh. Eric ended up buying that machine, and my wife, every time I build a machine for that pedestal, it's gone. Um, I, I want to do a review on it. I've got about 30 minutes of video filmed. Let me tell you, I got the very first Rec Room Masters Extensions pedestal last July, before it was even in the catalog, and I don't have the time to film it, so I've been doing little piece, bits and pieces, and I built that that case specifically to fit in there and have a lot of room that's the third one i built and it's it, eric bought it so um yeah we can work something out um anyway this is a devon case i bought it just to stay in budget i wanted to build a machine under a thousand bucks and so this is a uh, asus prime am4 motherboard it's got an amd Ryzen 7 2700, 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz memory, matching cable mods. That, um, the R RGB fans are some. I, I wanted to try these out because from what I read, they're much faster, much quieter, and they've got this dual loop. It's just a small line, and that line is nowhere near as. Um, I don't know, you know, it's not so RGB where it lights up the corner of the room. It's very subtle and very attractive. But those are probably the best fans I've ever held in my hand when it comes to quality wise. So we've got uh, three RGBs with the RGB controller with the AMD Zen. Oh, no, that's a. Uh, I've got a ton of these things, guys. This is a. Uh, Yeah, you know, um, I didn't know what fan I put in there, but I could tell by looking at it. So you got the Wraith fan there. With that's the Nvidia GTX Asus, a six gig, ten sixty. It's got a EVGA Gold semi modular power supply. You've got two Fantech one twenty three thousand RPM fans. Those are um, yeah. And they are hooked up to the fan controller. You've got an eight terabyte drive. You've got a three terabyte drive and a 120 gig SSD. Um, do you build out if you're providing machine? Oh yeah, all the time. I get hardware sent to me all the time for people wanting to build their machines. Um, So um, anyway, this machine, if I'm not mistaken, with, as you can see, it's got the matching cable mods. This machine took me longer than it took that Silverstone because this is a nice looking thermal, the, uh, the side is a very thick thermal glass uh, side, but the inside, is very thin and um, until you put a machine in it for fifty dollars you would definitely jump on this case for 50 bucks it's well worth 50 bucks but what i don't like is whenever they make motherboards and then they will have the cable mod slots or in your your cable slots at an angle for one i don't want to see any cables whatsoever and this case has holes all in the back. So what I ended up doing is you can see every single one of those cable mods has a straight, it's literally straight and under. It took me about an hour and a half, maybe a little longer. If you take that glass off, you won't see one cable. You won't see one tie. I did a good job on that one. And the side right over here, you've got slits. And you got a big slit up top. And you can see the top of the three terabyte hard drive. Well, I went and uh, I went downstairs and got. I have an old server, uh, old server 
day, I mean, a den that I keep a bunch of old parts in. I knew I had some filters, and I went and fabbed a filter, and it looks awesome. So, uh, anyway, this entire machine, everything is new on this machine except for, uh, I do believe, and I'm not certain, I have to look at the receipt, the ASUS video card may be a refurb from b &H or from Newegg. But without the 8 terabyte drive, it's right around um, 650, 675. So with an 8 terabyte, you just add a couple hundred bucks to that. And that's probably the cheapest build. I built a long time. And um, I'm kind of thinking about thinking I'm making it myself. So I've got enough stuff around here. The yeah, so anyway, guys, if you guys are interested, let me know. Um, the Silverstone has been here for about a week. I haven't been able to show it off because I haven't been allowed on the computer, but I do have the next edition will have to do with content and a lot of it. But unlike others, I don't you know, mass feed you a bunch of junk that's not playable. I mean, literally not playable. Why in the hell would you waste so much space? But there is going to be a new drive size, but it's not by much. Um, you know, if you can, people seem to be stuck on the PS3 for some reason, but do you know how much it costs to buy a modded PS3? Nothing. Would you rather play an emulated PS3 at really wonky frame rates that is uh, very unstable. Pay a hundred bucks or 150 bucks for a modded PS3 and just add your own. I just don't get it yet. Until it gets as playable and as stable as the Nintendo, then yeah, I'll probably into include the entire library. But until then, I'm doing one title at a time. And if it doesn't play all the way through, if it's got any type of issue at all, you know, you're on your own. I'm not messing with it. I um, I believe in quality over quantity. So, all right, guys, we've got ROTC. Um, our kids have ROTC competitions this week. I'm excited. It's really hot here, but the girls kicked major ass last weekend. I actually beat the boys, and hopefully uh, the boys can catch up. So, guys, if you're interested, let me know. Uh, I do have some emails. Uh, Ed, Mike, if you want to shoot me some details, I'd be glad to work with you and see what we can work out. Till then, guys, have a great, safe, and uh, awesome weekend. I forgot how to turn the stream off, but we're going to figure it out. Let's see. Later, guys.